Raphael Barlow. He's a pretty well respected draft analyst, I think most people would say. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I've always valued his opinions, but I respectfully disagree with what he said on when he said, I agree, Detroit has no need for Scoot. I thought this was crazy and just honestly one of those, like I was telling you before we went on, one of those tweets that could probably haunt him for years to come. It's kind of like mm -hmm. similar to Rashad Phillips saying he would take Alonzo Trier over Luka Doncic. Like, we'll never forget this stuff because it's just, it's just crazy. But what are your thoughts on this? I could understand where he's coming from. Like, obviously, if you look at the Pistons' last three drafts, I mean, you drafted Killian, who's a guard. You drafted Cade, who's kind of like that point forward. And you drafted Ivy, who plays kind of like in between like a combo guard, shooting guard. I can understand where he's coming from. But my philosophy has always been you take the best player available. And I, I think if you're, you're the Pistons and you pass on him, and then he becomes into this star player, which a lot of, you know, draft experts expect him to be like this, you know, Russell Westbrook S, you know, Derek Rose esque, Baron Davis S type of guard. You know how many Pistons fans are going to be so miserable? It's going to be another name on the chalkboard. Like, oh, we, you know, we passed on Melo, you know, we, we passed on Halliburton, we, we passed on Kimball Walker, we passed on Scoot Henderson. Like, I don't want that to be the case. If we're lucky enough to get two, by the way, like this is just so hypothetical. Like if the Pistons are a two, um, I saw some crazy takes, people saying they would take Brandon Miller, too. I was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw some of that stuff, too. I just kind of just rolled my eyes and kept scrolling. But I was going to make that point as well. We have had – we've watched Detroit pass over on so many camp miss prospects. There is no way they pass over on Scoot Henderson if they have the opportunity to draft him. They're not going to do that again. They did it with Devin Booker, Donovan Mitchell, you know, <laughs> guys that were, you know – you know, and I say they're can't miss because guys like you and I were watching them are like, these guys are can't miss prospects. How can you pass over these guys? You know, like we all said the same thing about those two, but I don't know. I, I just don't think Detroit is in a position to pass over Scoot Henderson. I've said that before and I'm sticking to it right now. He is the second best prospect after Victor Winnibania. So, I mean, if you have the, if you're in position to draft a Scoot Henderson, you, you take it regardless of who's on your team because it just – it opens up so many other doors. But if we – if we, we talked about it last week on the podcast. If you look back on some of these drafts, you can go through and say Scoot Henderson is probably the first pick. And I think we said like three or four drafts last week on the podcast. Like that's big time. So you just – I just thought it was too much of a bold take this early to say that about Detroit. But, bold. I, some Pistons fans, I was really surprised by it. That like a lot of them don't want Scoot. I don't know if it's them trying to like talk themselves out of it, but I, I've seen like Pistons fans say like, well, you know, Sacramento could have taken you know Jaden Ivey, but they elected to take Keegan Murray. But they're completely ignoring the fact that Sacramento's timeline and their situation is a hundred percent different than our timeline and their situation. I mean, you could go recent drafts, Golden State had a chance to draft Lamella Ball, and they go for Wiseman. Now, Wiseman, you know, I think he's still a really good player. I just think Golden State was not a great fit for him. I, I think if you put him in Atlanta, he would feast. Like, um, situation is everything when it does come to the draft, but you draft for best player available. The only time you really draft for fit is when you're drafted in the late 20s. <laughs> you just look, you know, who's the best, you know, small forward? I need some wing help. Um, that's just my philosophy on it. I know Pistons fans aren't going to agree with me, and that's okay. It's okay to have a different opinion from myself or even yourself uh, because that's what makes it, having a podcast and talking basketball fans so much fun. Yep. Yeah, I again, just to close on this topic, like you you draft Scoot if you have to, if, you, if you can. You know, I mean, I, I love Ivy. I love Killian. But, man, you know, there's a reason that they were – the fifth and seventh pick of their respective drafts and scoots, you know, would be the, you know, as the number two pick, generational talent, like Victor Winnabanya. But.